Hello everyone, welcome to Scorcher Toys at AnyMoon.com's review of Bandai's DX YF19 Full Set Pack. This toy was released in September 2018 for 27,000 yen and marks Bandai's second use of the mold following the original release of the VF19 Advance. If you didn't pre-order this toy and are still shopping for one, it's already pretty hard to come by. If you decide to spend your money on something else, I recommend you head on over to Big Bad Toy Store by clicking the link in the comments below. They always have a great selection and you help out this channel by clicking through. This toy comes in a box inspired by Bandai's more recent Macross Delta releases. It's made of sturdy cardboard, there's a lid that opens revealing an inner lid. Removing that lid reveals the toy nestled in styrofoam with a clear plastic lid. This is aptly named the full set pack because there are a load of accessories. You'll find the first treasure trove under its own lid in the styrofoam. Removing that small lid reveals two Asamo pilot figures, one with a helmet, one without, one Yang Newman co-pilot figure, a neck cover for gear walk mode, two paired hard point connectors for use with the reaction missiles, six hard point connectors for the various other weapons, four hard point conversion pieces for use with the mid-range missiles, three pairs of fixed post hands, and the gun. Beneath that tray, you'll find a plastic tray that includes the heavy arm cannon, which is seen for about three seconds in Macross Plus, a fold drive, fast packs, four reaction missiles, and 20 other underwing armaments. Going to the next tray below that, you'll find the connectors for the fold drive that was in the previous tray, a pinpoint barrier punch effect in four different pieces, also a display stand consisting of a base, an arm, and adapters for each mode. Underneath all of that good stuff, you'll find the instructions, and visit anymoon.com, I will have a full scan of the instructions up there. If you are familiar with the DXVF19 Advance, you probably want me to start this review off with a discussion of how things have changed. One of those things is a durability concern. A lot of people are receiving their YF19 with broken head lasers. That might be due to the new packaging, it might be due to some snafu with how the toy is packaged at the factory, but either way you might find yourself grabbing glue before you get to enjoy the toy. Another thing are the vertical stabilizers. They pop off very freely, readily on the YF19. Just an accidental glance can knock them off. On the VF19 Advance, they can be knocked off, but it usually takes something a little bit more forceful. The big difference between these two is definitely the badging, the paint applications on the toys. The DX VF19 Advance is from Macross Frontier, a cameo in Macross Frontier. So it has a bunch of SMS badging throughout. Uh, and there's plenty of it. And there's also a lot of standard vehicle marking that did make its way over to the YF-19, but you'll notice a lot of unique paint apps on the YF-19 also. Obviously we have a UN Spacey logo. We have the Sinsei industry, which previously was often referred to as Shinsei. So a little question mark there. Obviously UN Spacey. We have the new Edwards Test Flight Center uh, acronym painted on the wing. We have, again, that acronym on the vertical stabilizers, Supernova Project written down here. If we turn the toy over, there's also some new paint applications that are a little more standard. There is some paint on the arms now that previously was not painted on the VF-19 Advance. Uh, and you get another warning logo up on the front here. So just a couple little differences in standard paint applications. The major differences being that UN Spacey and New Edwards Test Flight Center uh, versus the SMS on the VF-19 Advance. The YF-19 has a bit of an unconventional canopy. It opens both forward and back, so we can pull this piece up and pull forward, and we can pull this piece up and pull back. So it's a little different in that regard. Now, it's unfortunate that Bandai couldn't reuse the YF-29's cockpit area, which has a nice cover and a folding seat. Instead, we have a very crammed back seat. Here is the Yang Newman co-pilot figure. We're going to go ahead and put him in. You can see it's a very tight fit. 
Now what you can do is just remove that rear canopy glass. I'll try to see if I can do it without doing that. But we gotta just push him in. There we go. And snug as a bug in a rug. And you can see I've got the helmetless Isamu in the front there. He uh, is only packaged with the DX YF19. The VF19 Advance comes with a more standard cockpit and canopy. It's a one seat cockpit. It just opens up straight like so. And you can see there's the helmeted pilot figure, which comes with both toys. Only the helmetless figure comes only with the DX YF-19. Bandai made the heels on the YF-19 much shorter. In fighter mode, this looks abrupt. In this line art comparison, you can see the reason why Bandai made the change, but it also looks like they overcorrected. The YF-19 comes with fast packs. Fast packs are a leg armor, a shoulder armor, and a small leg armor in between the shoulder and the leg right now. The advanced pack that comes with the VF-19 Advance is all of those things, the leg armor and the shoulder armor and that part in between, plus these armors on the front of the shoulder and these very large VF-25 style boosters. So that's one big difference between those two toys. You can see there's a color difference. This is kind of a drab gray. We have kind of a bluish gray on the fast pack. So while you can take the advance pack and put it on the YF-19 and you can take the YF-19's fast pack and put it on the advance, you aren't gonna wanna mix and match because of that color difference. Now, another difference you will note is there are slots in the shield on the YF-19. Those slots are not present on the VF-19 Advance, which is kind of strange, kind of an oversight on Bandai's part. The reason those slots exist is because of the fold drive, which looks like this. Uh, this is in comparison to what Yamato had many years ago. Uh, and you can see we've come a long way in terms of detail. Now, one cool thing that Yamato gave us that is not contested here is a cool light up effect, which I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but there's a color change going on with like strobing LEDs. It is very cool. You do not get that with this piece, but instead you get obviously better paint apps, better detail all around. Um, so it's a good looking display piece. There are pegs or little plugs, I should say, in the fold drives. So we're just gonna pull these plugs out I'm not very keen on these plugs. I don't think they should exist. And then we have these little connector pieces. So to connect our fold drive, we're gonna grab our toy. We're gonna slide this piece in like so. And then we're gonna grab the front piece. Now this front piece can be very difficult to install the first few times you try. Pegs on either side going into those slots. You wanna have it angled forward. And let's see if I can do this without breaking anything. There we go. All right, so that's plugged in pretty securely now. But since this slots in, I won't wanna turn my toy over once I've got these plugged into position. Now, watch your head laser. You should have a little bit of clearance there like so. And there you are. Now you've got the fold drive attached to your fast pack YF-19 toy. This toy comes with a lot of weapons and the weapon system is really cool. Unfortunately, the weapons do add a lot of weight to the wing and you can see due to the high speed mode, uh, the wing is kind of flimsy. So that's a little bit of a bummer, but the weapon system itself is really neat. So what you do is you attach to the wings of the toy, these little hard point connector pieces and there is a vertical stabilizer popping off which I told you can be an issue, it just pops back on. So anyways, this connector piece stays in the wing. We can pop this one off as two, this weapon off. And then we can decide like, oh, I want this in this place. And you can move things around and they stay on super securely once you press them into place. Now you do also get this piece here, which is a double connector. So here I've got two reaction missiles on one attachment piece. So obviously that gives you some flexibility. Now you do get so many weapons with this toy that you can turn around and put some of them on the VF-19 Advance, which did not come with weapons of its own. So if I flip this toy over, I can say, look, I want you to have your own reaction missile loadout. Now you can see one of the big drawbacks of the Advance is that those parts pop off pretty frequently, but 
We can go ahead, throw this reaction missile on as well. And hopefully just a little bit of pressure over here. And there you go. Now you've got the advanced packs with the reaction missiles on there too. So that's pretty cool. Turning our attention back to this toy, I now have an empty hard point space. I do have this piece here, which you'll remember had two reaction missiles attached to it. Well, we could turn around and say, you know what? I don't, I don't want that. I want, I want to put these things on there instead. And then you could theoretically have that mounted on there. Or we can turn around and say, hey, let's use those mid-range missiles. The mid-range missiles have another little piece that they use. So you just plug them in like so. And then you can take them and apply them to a hard point. So they're a little trickier, but there you go. You may recall a scene in Macross Plus where a Batroid mode YF-19 with an arm cannon attached blows up a Mac 2 monster. It did that with this device here, and it would have been cool enough for Bandai to include it just as something that attached in Batroid mode, but they actually gave it the ability to collapse into fighter mode and actually stow underneath quite nicely. And not only that, they gave it the ability to hold the gun. So we can take our gun like so, we can open this piece up and pull out a little finger here. And then we can take this and to put the grip through, there's a little peg right there, there's a slot in the grip. I got the gun the right way, there we go. So it's a little tricky, you wanna make sure that peg doesn't move around too much on you. But if you can fish it through, you can then pivot the whole thing down. And we're gonna kind of rotate this through as we do it. And you'll get the gun in a vertical alignment. And you can use this finger to kind of trap it where it's at and make sure it's not gonna go anywhere on you. And then you can flip the toy upside down. There's a little slot in the arm for those two little pegs right there. And there it goes. Now you've got the gun attached. Now, what you can also see is that there's not gonna be enough room for that gun with the landing gear deployed. But Bandai didn't give up. They gave us another option. So if we're using the display stand, I'll show you that in a moment, we can go ahead and use it like so. But when we're using the toy's landing gear, we're gonna to wanna to change things up a little bit. So we'll remove this, we'll put this finger back in, and then we will put the gun on in a sideways configuration, which again, a little easier to do, perhaps without camera and lights in your face. But that peg does spin on you, so it does make it a little tricky. Okay, so now I've got that gun on there. You can see it's it's a little loose. It might actually be better still to use that finger to kind of lock things in place here. But without doing that, I can take the toy, flip it upside down, and peg it back in again. Let's see if I can line up that. Ooh, there goes that vertical stabilizer again. Now you can see probably just enough room and here you can see how the vertical stabilizer plugs in. There it goes. And here we go. So it's still laying on there a little bit. Uh, again, I can uh, massage it a little, but theoretically that's how you get the toy with the gun on there using its landing gear. Now obviously the much better thing to do would be to have it vertical right down the center and use the display stand. So let's take a look at the display stand. The VF-19 Advance came with a nice SMS display stand base. The YF-19 just comes with a plain black display stand base, which I thought was a bummer since we have a DX VF-1 coming out. They could go with the UN Spacey display stand and use that for those toys too, but I guess not. Bandai didn't really care. One thing also to point out, uh, the VF-19 Advance has a narrow fi fighter mode adapter. YF-19 a little bit wider to give us some room for that big cannon that we've attached to the bottom of our toy. Now attaching your toy to the display stand adapter 
It's all about this peg here. The fighter mode adapter comes in a few parts. So we want to install these parts based on whether or not we've got fast packs in or not. So fast packs use the lower holes. Uh, no fast packs use the upper holes. And it, honestly, it's such a small difference. It doesn't really matter that much, but that's the theory behind it. So we could take our toy now, we can thread it in and we wanna get that slot there into that peg right there. Having handled the VF31 lately, where it really locks into position, this display stand adapter, uh, not quite as hardy as that one, but it does the job. I'm not worried my toy is about to fall off. If you're less familiar with these uh, display stands, then you should know that there are no points of articulation anywhere. All it does is lift your toy up so you don't have to use the landing gear. Uh, and that's about it. Like the Arcadia YF-19 and the Bandai DX VF-19 Advance, there is a leg missile housed in here. We can get there by unpegging the wing, which you can see is a little problematic. Get that out of the way and then fish a fingernail into that door. Now there you can see it just got back in there. So we'll unpeg that wing a little bit more. We could swing this out. You can see there's some nice detail work inside and there's the missile. The Arcadia design, if you're not using fast packs, is superior here because it doesn't have that peg on the door that holds the wing in place. So you can actually just swing it out without actually going through that unpegging step. So high points for Arcadia there. Let's get this wing pegged back into position. But if you are using the fast packs, as we see over on this side, the Bandai design is superior. Now I've already got a peg out, but you would have to unpeg right here. When you're using the fast packs is a much less uh, arduous case. So you just unpeg that. That top peg is already unpegged. You don't have to worry about that. And then we can just pry away at the fast pack and Usually your fast pack will pop off, but you might be able to go ahead and get that whole thing down and then expose the missile without removing the fast pack. So that is the benefit of the Bandai design. Not as good if you're not using fast packs, but better if you are. As you've no doubt come to expect from your premium transformable fighter planes at this point, this plane does come with intake fan covers that are removable. They peg in quite securely. When removed, there is your fan detail. It's a nice paint application. That's not always the case on Bandai DX toys. So that looks pretty good to my eye. They've also molded in kind of what the door would look like if it had collapsed in an integrated fashion. So that's good. You can see the gun beneath the vehicle now, and it has a pivot point right here because if it were just straight, like it is in Batroid mode, it would be angled quite a bit downwards. You get that pivot point to simulate a straighter firing gun. Not an ideal situation or a solution, but it is a simple one and that's usually a pretty good thing. Now installing the gun is not exactly simple. You'd have to transform the toy partially to gear walk mode by bringing this leg down, bringing the arm off the shield, pivoting the arm, pegging it in, and then putting it all together again. So it's Definitely not as simple to put this gun on in fighter mode as it is for some other toys out there. Now this toy also has integrated landing gear, again, as you would expect from a premium Valkyrie toy. The door opens, the, the hinge has a little extension, then the door opens, revealing the landing gear. You're gonna just slip a fingernail in there and pull it forward, it's pretty stiff, it does kind of lock into that forward position and have a rubber tire that spins on it. The front landing gear is quite a, a novel approach to a YF-19 landing gear. You've got these little doors that open here, and then you've got this door right here. And again, this is all the same as it was on the VF-19 Advance. And then you have the landing gear in there. It's a, on the 19s, it is very stiff on the YF-19s, I should say, very stiff. So I have this little phone repair tool I'm gonna to use to just fish in there to help me pull those wheels up. 
once I have them up, this landing gear extends. Now there is no lock at this point right here, which is a bit of a bummer, but you do get an articulated tow bar. This is obviously all metal. Uh, it does, doesn't really lock in forward position. So you have, if you move the toy back, it might do that action. And if you move it forward, it might do that action. So obviously that's not a great place to be, but you do have an articulated tow bar. It does look good. It will serve its purpose. Not the best implementation, but sort of innovative nonetheless. Fighter mode is great, except the wings are a little bit sloppy. And the reason those wings are sloppy is because of high speed mode. High speed mode is the ability to take these wings and fold them like so. so just a little bit of pressure. And now it looks like it's diving down into action. When in this position, the hard points kind of butt up against the leg pretty closely. So any weaponry probably gonna interfere with that leg. So is high speed mode worth the sloppiness in the wings? I think for most people, the answer is probably no, but I will let you judge for yourself. Now it's time for the inevitable Arcadia comparison. The Bandai toy does some things really well. The integration of these canards in the front, a lot of people will tell you they don't swoop up high enough, but they look nicely integrated into the toy. There's a nice streamlined profile as we move back into the intake, and it's a streamlined profile all the way through where the wing connection is. So all of that very nicely done. This neck cover here is integrated into the heat shield, which is also a big positive. On the downside, we've obviously seen these stabilizers popping off. You get these trap doors here, which are pretty hard to get to sit completely flush. You end up with gaps between the legs and the shield, and these shoulders tend to be pretty gappy too. Uh, otherwise, the toy does hold together very well. I have a piece up here that kind of pops free fairly often, but otherwise, everything nice and sturdy. Flipping the toy over, you do also get a nice transition from the thigh through the knee into the leg, all of that looking very good. And the toy overall looking pretty good from the bottom. There are guns on either side of what becomes kind of the crotch area. They do tuck in very tightly. And I think Arcadia's version of that might look a little more like you would remember it from the show. Here you have these big cannons that are really nicely exposed there and obvious and look like they would be useful in fighter mode, unlike the Bandai. The other thing we could see right away with the Arcadia, nice painted white landing gear bay and the rear landing gear pivot outward. So all of that looks really good. But you do get this weird black extension area on the legs, which obviously a little less ideal. Flipping the toy over, we do see the wing connection area, not nearly as streamlined as it was on the Bandai. Same thing with the hip intake area, big fat leading edge to it. And the canards have a big peg that looks pretty cheesy to it. This shield here is a separate part, but otherwise everything nice and flat all the way through the back of the toy up top. So positives there for Arcadia. Uh, another weakness to point out, the wings, as much of a problem as they might be on the Bandai toy, are a bigger problem on the Arcadia toy, including the armaments, which have more of a tendency to pop off on you. If you're wondering how this is going to pair with other toys in your collection, it is a little bit smaller than Arcadia's YF-19 offering, which was the same size as Yamato's YF-19 in fighter mode. But it's not a big enough size discrepancy where it wouldn't work with Yamato's other Macross Plus releases. Though, it, I think it's going to be pretty obvious that this is from a different manufacturer in a different time. Uh, probably not obvious enough to stop you from doing it. If you're curious how it's going to work with your Delta toys, uh, it's going to fit right in with those. Uh, if you've got a VF-1 lying around, the YF-19 is a much larger vehicle than the VF-1. And as you can see here, the YF-19 is even a little bit bigger than the YF-29 from Macross Frontier. Definitely check out my separate transformation guide, but I did want to point out a couple little cool aspects of transformation in this review. First of all, when I pull down this leg, you could see this section pops out. It's a cavity filler. It's pretty cool that it's an integrated part like that and the just the whole mechanism itself is pretty cool. There's also a little cavity filler that slides out from the back. 
So again, no necessary separate parts to fill in all those gaps that make everything come together so nicely in fighter mode as we go to gear walk mode. Also, another cool little gimmick here, the shield. So if I can pop the sections open next to the head and pop off of the shield, you can see it's got an integrated neck cover. That neck cover slides down and then retracts into the shield, locking into place. And by doing so, it fills in the gap that was there for the head laser. So again, another really cool aspect of transformation that makes this toy even more fun. While I'm not the biggest fan of the YF-19 conceptually in gear walk mode, the whole armpits and the wings thing looks silly to me, the DX toys, both the VF-19 Advance and the YF-19 pull this off very well. The YF-19 did add something that really helps in my opinion. So here's our VF-19 Advance. Underneath, if we look at this leg, they did have a kneecap, but there was no twist point at that knee. Instead, what we had was the ability to angle the legs outward, which still allowed you to get a pretty aggressive stance and seemed to be enough. But then when we got to the YF-19, we got the addition of a twist. And that twist is gonna let you have even more fun with this toy in gear walk mode. You can hear ratcheted kneecaps with a good range of motion there. The kneecaps themselves, look at that, that's a pretty, pretty crazy range of motion going back. And then all the way forward, again, very aggressive, dynamic posing ability. I wish this ratchet was a little stiffer. Every now and then the toy will kind of fall under its weight even though it's ratcheted. The ankle joints are super dynamic also, which lets you actually take advantage of those two twist points, the twist and the swivel. So the ankle goes back and forth. It comes way forward, way back, and it twists. And it's metal. And it's usually stiff enough to let you do all of those things that you really wanna do. So high points there. You can have a lot of fun handling this toy and it holds together. It's not popping apart on me at all. There aren't pieces falling off. The only thing I gotta watch for is bumping these canards. Uh, if you hold it by the neck, you could pop a little piece underneath the neck free, but it just plugs right back in. And you've got the wings here. They're a little loose, but you can see I've got weaponry on the wings. You gotta watch what weaponry you're gonna use. Cause if it's a little long, like those missiles, uh, it's probably gonna bump into the shields or the arm. And even so, you're gonna wanna be cognizant of what you do with gear walk mode when you are employing that weaponry. There are some things the Arcadia toy does that I like a lot. And one of them is how it kind of gets a little narrow through the neck. I like that in fighter and gear walk modes. It's also chunky. It's less uh, difficult. It handles easier. It transforms a little bit easier. So all of those are good things. Now, unfortunately, the ankles when you get to gear walk mode can be pretty problematic. First, they're not very attractive. Second, they get loose and the toy has a nasty tendency just to nose dive. So that's unfortunate. Now also you saw on the Bandai toy, it has those really cool pivots behind the intakes. You don't get that on the Arcadia toy. You do get the swivels at the knee, which is good. So you can get most of the aggressive gear walk poses that you would traditionally see, but you're not gonna have that same really fun time that you'll have with the Bandai toy making up new poses and just kind of going crazy with it. And as you can see the weight on the wings there, causing those to get jostled pretty easily. The canards also, while they do get bumped on the Bandai, they straight up fall off on the Arcadia toy. So I do like the Arcadia toy. I think it looks good in gear walk mode, but there's no question in my mind that Bandai does the mode better and is more enjoyable. Now I do have the fast packs on there. They don't really add much to the toy. You can angle them however you want but there's no real gimmicks to them. There's no mechanical detail, there's no missiles. It just is what it is. So if you like the look, great. If you don't like the look, then you're not missing much. 
I've got the gear walk adapter on the display stand. It works very similarly how, to how it did in fighter mode. It does elevate the toy again. And in this case, you have so much articulation in gear walk mode that it does let you get off some really cool poses that you might've dreamed about before using the display stand. And now that you don't have to worry about getting everything to balance, you can actually achieve. So that's cool. The negative to the display stand is that you can't angle it backward to get like a really screeching to a stop pose. As we move to Batroid mode, here are some quick comparisons to allay any fears that you have in Batroid mode that this toy will not scale well with the others in your collection. Works out just fine with either Yamato's Macross Plus toys or even some Frontier toys you might have lying around. Here we are in Batroid mode and we've got several accessories to discuss. First, while the articulated hands that come on the toy do an admirable job holding the gun, we can remove them we can remove the gun. Now again, the gun doesn't have any gimmicks to it like a removable magazine or the ability to stow behind the shield like the Arcadia does. It's just a gun with that pivot for fighter mode. The hands that come with this toy, these fixed posed hands, are a little bit rubbery, which helps when you go to fish in the gun if you're gonna use that particular hand. And then obviously you just pop it right back in and a little bit more solid handling, a little bit larger hand, so maybe a little better look but just a tiny bit, it's not a huge difference. Now we can also take off that hand and use something like a fist. And if we're gonna do that, we could go ahead and grab our heavy cannon that goes on the arm. Now, one thing to discuss before we go into this, if you have an advanced toy, there are several little connectors on the arm that are not present. So there's these two dots here. If we look at the top of the arm, um, there's some tampo there, but there's also a notch here that's not present. And if we flip the arm over, there is a slot inside that black stripe that is also not present. So the VF-19 Advance cannot borrow its younger brother's heavy arm cannon. So let's go ahead and talk about how that heavy arm cannon is going to be installed. So when you get it, whoo, looks like this. And the fat piece is gonna go on the outer edge and you can see it's got those two pegs and we're just gonna fish them into position and press in firmly. And then we're gonna rotate down and then come up over on the other side. And this peg here is gonna go into that slot in the black piece. And then we have the final top part that has that little peg that goes into that little slot there. And we'll just push that down and if it doesn't quite fit right, this hinge is adjustable. So try to get it into just the right position where it will hold in place. It's a little finicky on that, but there you go. So maybe not. Got it in position. Again, keep adjusting that until it really works for you. It's in position. That is the closed position. And it looks pretty good just as it is, but it opens up, it's got a cool little gimmick. So the top one just kind of comes up. If you open it too far, it's gonna pop off. Bottom one has a little hinge door to it. Uh, and again, you see nice little detail for either side. And then this whole side has a cover to it that comes up to expose a bigger cannon. So that is a pretty cool cannon for a very short cameo in the movie. And so that's really cool that Banda gave us that. Now we do have another option. We get a pinpoint barrier punch effect, which comes together just like this. If you're wondering how to get yours together, there's a little notch. It's very hard to see on each piece with a corresponding notch on these little separate parts. So you just push it all together and then it goes on just like any fixed posed hand would. So you just have to line it up and then apply pressure. I'm sure I'm doing this in the wrong direction right now. It does swivel around once it's on there so let's see if I can, now it's good to keep a thumb on the top so you don't just push your door open. That didn't work. And there we go. So once it's on there, you could spin it around however you want and get a pretty cool pinpoint barrier punch effect also. Moving from accessories to gimmicks, you can remove the area above the visor on the toy. I'm just gonna put a fingernail in there and kind of apply pressure upward. And then it pops that area off. 
I don't know anyone that would ever use it, but it's included. It was included on the Arcadia toy and the Yamato before it. The Arcadia toy, it's a little loose. On the Bandai toy, it is nice and tight. Now, one a little QC issue that I've run into, and I know I'm not alone out there. Uh, my toy, which you may have noticed, is having a hard time buttoning down the back. And that's really what locks everything together, keeps the chest nice and tight. For whatever reason, on my YF-19 toy, there's just too much pressure, it's not working out. So I assume it's because my toy is relatively new. If I take my VF-19 Advanced toy, you could see that button is all the way down and everything is locked perfectly into position. So I hope that with a little bit more handling, my YF-19 gets there. Uh, but in the meantime, it is a little problematic. Getting to Batroid mode might be a little tricky, but once you get here, it is very rewarding. There is a lot of articulation for you to enjoy. Let's start with the head. The head is on a ball joint. So you can cock it left and right. You could spin it all the way around. You can look up and you can look down. And there is a neck swivel, or neck pivot, I should say as well so lots of fun you can have just with the head alone the shoulder has the transformation pivot which you can use for some really cool punching effects it also has this shoulder armor on the top which can pivot away pivot up and is stiff enough to stay up on its own and you have that flap at the end that you can kind of do whatever you want with as well the shoulder itself can pivot away from the body which is good and obviously we can rotate forward and back there as well, all the way around if we wanted to. Coming down, we have an elbow joint here, and then there's another joint right in the forearm, which allows you to get that nice double jointed 180 degree, I should say, elbow. So all good stuff there. There's a swivel right at that elbow connection as well. And then we have the ability to swivel the hands even the fixed posed hands have a wrist rock to them. And then you can see the articulated fingers on that integrated hand as well. Moving lower, there is a waist joint, but it is very limited in what you can do with it. So uh, it's there, but it's only gonna give you a little bit of cock in either direction. Coming down, this toy can spread its legs far wider than any horse would ever necessitate. So. That's cool. You can also, of course, bring them in, which is cool too. And then you can bring the leg way up and obviously way back as well. And you've seen going down the Garawak joint, the twist at the Garawak joint and the knee, which can come all the way back and even extend and do more crazy things. And I've also shown you already the ankles, so I won't belabor the point. Instead, we'll just say this toy in Batroid mode delivers lots of fun and lots of dynamic posing opportunities. If you feel like the DXYF19 looks a little tall, you can collapse the ankles. Now, obviously you're losing a very dynamic aspect of Batroid mode, but you can put that ankle in and there is no real harm to doing it. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And now it's a little less tall of a Batroid mode. Looks a little more similar to the Arcadia YF-19. The downside is if while handling this toy, you push in on this area here, you can collapse that calf uh, because that's a transformation mechanism. At which point you would then have to go ahead and pull out that leg again and kind of put it back in. So nothing really terribly detrimental to it. It is an option if you don't like the look of the extended more dynamic ankles. All right, so I've got the toy up on the display stand. It's maybe not the most natural looking pose, but I wanted to show you that you can still access these missiles within the legs. Again, it'd be kind of hard to get a natural position for doing that, but it's still there and still available. Uh, the hard points on the wings in Batroid mode, not very naturally accessible. You could do something with the wing to make it more accessible. So you're probably not gonna put weaponry on there. And if you did, it would be very awkward. So definitely not recommended. These missiles under the legs, by the way, are also removable. So if you wanted to recreate the This Is Animation Macross Plus special, lay out all those missiles, you can go ahead and include that missile in the group as well. 
I do have the ankles recessed on my 19, my YF19. They're extended on the VF19 Advanced. So that gives you kind of a feel for what that Batroid mode difference is. If you are wondering to yourself, hey, should I buy the VF19 Advanced or the DXYF19? If you like the Advanced packs, that's really your only driver for buying the VF19 Advanced. Otherwise, the DXYF19 is everything that the VF19 Advanced was with some improvements and with better accessories. So it's the, the vehicle you remember from Macross Plus. So it's got a little more charm for you and it's got some small improvements. The big negative here being those vertical stabilizers that pop off frequently. And it's still like the VF19 Advance, is fairly frustrating to transform. It's pretty complex. It takes some getting used to. The Arcadia YF19 on the other hand, a little bit simpler the frustration on this toy comes from the loose ankles and the looseness of fit on other parts like the intake covers, uh, the shield can pop off, the head cover. There's a few things that pop off on this toy that make it a little more frustrating to handle. But otherwise, it is a simpler design. It does have a very nice chunky look to it. You can see the loose ankles causing me some problems right now. And I do very much enjoy my Arcadia YF19. But if I only had the money to spend on one particular YF-19 toy, uh, I have no problem recommending Bandai's DX YF-19. I think it is easily the most fun. Again, these vertical stabilizers, not the most fun, but they just pop back into place. It's not that awful. So if you're gonna buy one, this is the one to get. I do have a separate transformation video. I do have a separate fast pack and fighter mode installation video. Check out my full review up on anymoon.com. And as always, thanks for watching.